Yes, Fritz. Yeah, Fritz, I'm going to have to call you back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to France. It's time for the fifth league final of the season. We're here, we're live. Welcome to the 2019 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup and welcome to Champagny and Bon Bois. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Champagny. In a few moments' time, the league finals will be getting underway. But before we get underway, we want to show you something that we've been working on for the last couple of days. We caught up with the Ladevan brothers, one of whom is in the finals. Let's take a look at the interview with Le Frère Ladevan. Yeah, so basically I think we we had a mother that had different convictions than some other people and it impacted a lot on our lives and so we started uh, doing a lot of homeschooling uh, that left us a lot of time for a practicing sport, doing music, uh, spend a lot of time uh, outdoor. I think it changes a little bit our side of our vision of, of living, living our lives. Yeah, I think that that makes us uh, learn how to be, you know, out sometimes alone and, you know, just <laughs> be there and survive, if I can say that. Having having your brother on the same competition as you're climbing, um, yeah, it's it's even more powerful, I think, because uh, yeah, you have pressure for yourself, but sometimes you feel a lot of pressure for yeah. for for your brother. Sometimes when it comes to cheering, uh, it's horrible pressure <laughs> when he's climbing. Yeah, yeah. For example, when his first semi-finals in Beijing two years ago. Yeah, I was so happy for him, you know, but even more than I would be from, for myself because I would be uh, concentrating on my climbing and everything. And when you're on the other side, you can just like feel it completely. And that's, that's pretty crazy. We are really trying to help ourselves to, to grow up. And yeah. I think yeah, it's, it's motivation between yeah, the it's partners. motivation. There is, of course, a bit of rivality, you know, but I think it's really 100% positive. So I think climbing for us does not brings us together, but it definitely makes it stronger. I would say that we leave a lot of. Um, like very very strong moments together because of climbing because it's what we do because it's our lives so it's like all the time it's about climbing and um, all the time we spend out there it's yeah it makes us stronger uh, together for sure Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, and a very warm welcome 
to Champagny en Vanois. We are about to get underway with the fifth lead final of the 2019 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup season. We have whittled down almost 80 competitors to the final eight in men's and women's. And we have had all kinds of weather and all kinds of beauty. And that has been beautiful. Joining me today is my co-commentator, Kendra Stritch of the USA. Kendra, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Liam. Uh, it's great to have you on board, and I'm mm -hmm. delighted to welcome to you the, welcome you to the booth, but uh, you tell me that you're not going to start with me. You know, my very close friend, Emer McSwiggin, is out first, and I love cheering her on in person and yelling the time for her. She really likes to have that last-minute call and um, I'd really like to go out and do that for her. Well, okay, fine. I'll just have to deal with that, I guess. Um, I'll let you get out there and uh, go and cheer for her. We'll welcome you back after Emo McSwiggins climbed. Um, whilst Kendra does that, I'm going to give you guys the start lists. We have eight men and eight women. Let's take a look at the men's start list to begin. First athlete out will be Chang Hyun Lee of Korea. He'll be followed by Dmitry Grobenikov of Russia. Alexei Marshalov will be next from Russia. Mohamed Reza Safdarian follows him from Iran. Nikolai Kuzovlev of Russia will follow him. Out sixth will be Hyung Park of Korea. Luna Ladovon, the local boy, will be out seventh for France. And Yannick Glatard, who qualified first yesterday for Switzerland, will be out eighth. In the women's competition, as Kendra just alluded to, Ema McSwiggan of Ireland will be our first climber out. She'll be followed by Han Nare Song of Korea. Marion Tomas, another local for France, will be out third. Marion Filipova of Russia, fourth. Maria Talakanina, fifth. Yunsun Shin of Korea, sixth. Zainab Kobra Musavi, seventh for Iran. And Petra Klingler will be out eighth. Our first place qualifier, the athletes competing in reverse order this afternoon. Wherever you are tuning in from, uh, we would love to hear from you here on the broadcast, regardless of where you are watching this. Uh, we have lots of people tuning in in lots of different channels. Couldn't be easier. You can use the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing on any of the social media platforms. We will see that. Similarly, you can contact me directly on any of the social media platforms. Just search at Liam Lonsdale. You can send me a direct message uh, with questions, etc., etc. Tag me in your posts. We love to hear from you. Lots of people already getting involved in that chat. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get this thing going. Ema McSwiggan, our first athlete representing Ireland. Qualified in eighth place yesterday. Nine women topped. We had the unfortunate situation where nine tops happened, but only eight athletes can go through. And so Enni Bertling just missed out on finals. Speaking of Enni Bertling, uh, one of our regulars and the broadcasters let us know that he's come up with a name for her fan club called the Entourage which I think is absolute genius. We now have the McSwooners and the Entourage. I think we need to come up with some fan club names for the male athletes as well. But as always, whoever you're cheering for and wherever you're cheering from, we would love to hear from you. Ema McSwiggan now preparing to begin her route. Allez, c'est parti. 5.59, and so she begins. First time that we've seen this athlete climb, starts on the steep ice section, directly opposite the commentary booth. And immediately leaves the ice and now moves up onto the steep wooden section. Female athletes have six minutes to climb their route. 18 quick draws in total, including the top, much longer than the 10 quick draw route from yesterday's semi final. Thank you. 
sera à nouveau accessible jusqu'à 20h, une fois les podiums passés. Moving through these technical sections. Lots of clips in close proximity on this low part of the route, already at clip number four. Just looking for the best position on that left hand. Nima currently sits in fourth place in the overall rankings, finished eighth in Korea, second with a silver medal in China, ninth in Switzerland and fourth in Italy. Makes clip six in that deep lock with the right hand and takes the hook side on with the left, stands up into that volume. Moves up into the upper parts of this wooden structure, heading towards the next ice section. Throws in that figure four with the left leg over the right hand to take the next position. Again into that reversed hook with the left hand by clip number eight, which she's made. Two minutes 23 on the clock. Into the Stein with the right hand. Makes clip number nine. That's halfway through the clips now for Ema McSwiggan. Reaches up above her into that hook in the underside of the structure. Just trying to decide whether to go into the middle grip or the high grip. Nima has two triggers on that tool there, so it gives her a little bit more ability to rest in different points on the tools, or rest her hand rather on different points of the tools. That section there is completely overhanging, completely horizontal. You see the rope around her outside. She now clipped the rope underneath her, which isn't a problem, but just to be careful of that, that she doesn't tie herself in knots as tens made, and she continues moving with one minute and 30 seconds now. Flex the rope around herself to use her shoulder to kind of pull it along with her, and clip 11 beckons. There it is makes the clip you hear the fans and most likely friends shouting one minute to Ema and watch how she accelerates now Ema known for a conservative initial pace and then someone says a minute and all of a sudden she finds a gear that you just wouldn't have thought was possible Moves quickly around the ice section with 42 seconds on the clock. Can we give Amir some support, please, ladies and gentlemen? We are. You see how high she is there. About to give the final moves to the top, straight ahead. They're interesting that she's reaching up for that clip, but I don't think that that's the right clip. I can't see the number of the orange clip you can see behind her, but it wouldn't make sense that you should clip high to then clip low. Could be a... That is clip 13, I'm being told. 
the not worried about the drag and her time's out at clip 13. That's Ema McSwiggan's attempt over. She'll go immediately to the ice box. She's a little bit tangled in a crampon there. She's all good. Ways to the crowd. We'll have to wait and see how that compares to the rest of the athletes. Well, she sits in provisional first place. Lots of people very supportive of Ema, as always. All the McSwooners out there. Kendra Stritch about to rejoin me and we'll see what she thinks of that performance. And our first male athlete begins his route and it is of course Chen Hyun Lee of Korea. Kendra, welcome back. Thank you, Liam. Uh, that was good. Yeah, she climbed well, just slower than she'll be happy with. I don't know why you shot one minute when there's a minute left. Why do you not shoot it when there's three minutes left? <laughs> I she goes so fast. She does. Um, because she knows better. And then she doesn't trust the timing. <sighs> I'm going to see next week and blast it at that speed for the entire route. She's so impressive when she pulls it on like that turns it on like that rather you know she just finds another gear that you just don't it, after she's climbed so conservatively it's so hard to see like, oh my gosh where did that come from anyway Ema sits in provisional first place 13 clips made before the timer ran out and now we turn our attention to Chang Hyun Lee how's the route setting been here so far Kendra it's been easy or conservative for the women we've been a bit disappointed the Moves have been pretty small, but for the men, we've seen some bigger moves. They've been consistently on these long, steeper um, walls. So um, it's not been anything spectacular, but it's been solid route setting. Yesterday, we had the unfortunate occurrence where nine females topped and only eight can go through. Correct. What was the uh, the mood amongst the athletes last night? I unfortunately we're staying in lots of different places here, whereas in the other tours we're kind of all in the same spot. So I didn't get to chat to anybody. What was the the sentiment? Everybody was disappointed that it came down to that. Even the athletes that qualified high because they were quick, they were disappointed that it had come down to that uh, to get into finals. It came down to time. Um, so any Bertling of Finland, unfortunately, was that ninth competitor who topped and did not get to go on to finals. Commiserations to any, but I think we have a consolation prize in that we've found a name for a fan club. Really? The Entourage. And what is that? Oh, the Entourage. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's good, Liam. That good wasn't work. me. That was no? someone on the broadcast. But yeah, great work from uh, all of the ice climbing fans. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome to Champagne of Amois. We're here with the lead finals, the fifth lead finals of the 2019 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup season. And you are watching Chang Hyun Lee, our first male competitor in this finals, moving very well indeed. Five minutes, 30 seconds is the uh, full time that these athletes got. He's got two minutes and five seconds remaining as he makes that clip there. And so this puts him up onto the upper half of the wall once he gets past that ice and then there's a, a new head wall that they open up for finals above this the extender wall the go go gadget head wall chang hyun lee climbing now with clip 12 mania 17 total just over one minute 42 make those next five clips kendra stritch joining me in the studio today from team usa oh pops there left hand he looks so controlled kendra he was We'll see that again in a second, but that was really from nowhere. He'd been moving very well. All of a sudden, he was off. So he had that right hand in the 
inverted undercut, switches it to the high grip, the left hand leans away with the right foot and it just pops out of there, slight bit of pick shift perhaps. Yeah, it looks like he pulled out on that enough to shift the pick out of the sweet spot. Chang Hyun Lee there with 12 clips made, we'll have to wait and see where that puts him. You can see a little shake of her head there, wasn't quite happy with performance. Next athlete out in the women's competition, Han Narae Song. Pretty peculiar to see her in seventh place qualifying, Kendra. Yeah, well, this is a, another symptom of or consequence of it coming down to time in the semifinals. So she was just slightly slower than six of the other women. And um, so it put her down lower than normal. Indeed. Well, there is Han Nare Song. She currently, in the overall rankings, sits in third place behind Wun Xun Shin and Maria Tolokanina. She has 221 points, three bronze medals this season. 13th place in China. Not quite found that winning form yet. Very rare that Han Nare Song doesn't win a competition in a season. So maybe this is the one. Yeah, she has this one and one more. Well, I was chatting to her the other day and she hadn't registered for Denver. But she's thinking about it. I hope to see her there. I also hope to see her competing in Denver. We'll have to wait and see if that's the case. Reaches up the high grip on the left hand with the right to that hook and moves past. Clip from number one. What's this structure like to climb on, Kendra? It's a really fun structure with all of the ice, and the ice is really good and solid this year. So it's very interesting how you can move from the plywood to the ice and back again multiple times on the routes. And um, they have the different steepnesses also. So it's a pretty versatile structure. It can get a little dark climbing on the inside of it. It's... um. It's funny because, well, not funny. It's not funny at all, actually. But it's interesting because um, people that are new to the sport who watch the other competitions often say, this is ice climbing. Where's all the ice? And here in Champagny, we have all this ice. And the biggest problem with ice is that it's very difficult to make it hard enough to split the competitors. And, of course, what we see here is them dropping that time down or making those moves easier and making it more of a sprint. That's kind of the compromise, I guess. And I suppose from a spectator's point of view, it depends whether you like to see powerful, dynamic jumps and, you know, these crazy moves that we've seen in some of the competitions like South Spain, Rabenstein in Korea, or whether you want to see these kind of sprint sections up the ice if you want ice in your ice climbing World Cup. What's your preference, Kendra? Uh, I prefer to have the more gymnastic, dynamic you know, climbing with a little bit less ice. I love going ice climbing separately, but um, the real uniqueness of this sport is the unique, is the big dynamic stuff. Yeah, sure, and we've seen that becoming more and more prevalent in the route setting. Um, as the seasons advance, Hamare Song now approaching the upper part of that steep overhanging wooden panel, which turns into a fully horizontal roof. One of the uniquenesses of this structure that we're not using this year is that overhang, excuse me, overhanging ice up on the headwall. Uh -huh. And in past years, we've had routes that cut straight across that, but we, we don't have that this year. Any theories as to why? No, just the route, <laughs> setters, the route setters chose not to. Yeah. I thought for sure we would with how good the ice is. Yeah, the ice is in amazing condition this year. They've had some really, really favorable weather in Champagny the past few weeks. Um, meters and meters of snow. Um, and it's been cold as well. And you can see the ice. And it really is as blue as it looks on your screen. Um, that is not a color filter. It's so, so vividly blue. Hanare Song now moving into that roof section. That hanging hook there with the left hand and places the left tool into the box, figure nine, left leg over left hand. Switches to a four with the left leg over the right hand. Back to the nine to make clip number 10. 
2 minutes and 18 seconds on the clock. And she's uh, 46 seconds ahead of Ema McSwigan at this point. You can see from those clip times, those split times, you get a pretty good idea of the difference between each athlete and how quickly they've moved from one point to the next. And she reaches up high, interestingly climbing right up there to put 12. Moving towards 13. Now, Kendra, you were outside watching him. I'm interested to get your thoughts on this next clip. It appears that they're clipping it up to clip down and then go back up again. Is that exactly how it is or is that a perspective illusion? No, that's how it is. Is that not going to put a lot of drag in the system? I believe it will. Oh. I think there's already quite a bit of drag at this section. Okay, well, we'll see how that evolves for the athletes. She reaches all a little foot pop there, but strong in the tools. That right hand wasn't going anywhere in the ice and the left hand in the good hook position to make clip 14 with a minute remaining. What's he doing? Photographer up there in the green jacket. Look at that, they're in the ice. Kendra, you were asking. Yep, they are using it. That's great. So they hum that a song, climbs up this steep, overhanging ice. Quite hard to get a, a feel. Oh, a little pop of the pick there. These tools not designed for swinging into the ice like that. You know, it's very difficult to get a good placement like a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A specific ice axe word, an ice axe designed specifically for that purpose. A tool with a straighter shaft, uh, less curvature than these tools. Oh, and she's popped that left hand, but manages to hold it. Swings around, and that clock's ticking down. Three seconds remain. She does have clip 15 made. That's going to be time up for her. Heart in mouth stuff there for Hanare Song of Korea. Solid performance there, Kendra. Yeah, it was great to see her get onto that overhanging ice and the drama. You see how good that placement was with the right hand. Enough for her to even hold that spin round on her entire shoulder and, and keep going. Next athlete out. Dmitry Gabenikov, the Siberian bear. I know a lot of you were disappointed not to catch his performance yesterday. You'll get the whole thing today. Do not worry about that. Davai Dmitry. Such a unique competitor, Dmitry Kendra. His height, his weight, his build. And he's a unique character on the tour, too. <laughs> this is true. He's very, very friendly. He's a gentle giant. He is. Although, you do know if he gives you a high five or a slap on the back, that as gentle as he tries to be, still knocks the wind out of you. <laughs> yeah, you have to get guy. a good stance. You certainly do. 85 kilos, six foot five. I know I'm moving between metric and imperial, but. I'm just, this is what I've been told. He's really tall and he's a big lad. Shoulders wider than five men as he moves up into that next section towards clip number three. The route setter is using that blue volume there to make it steeper to hold that floating undercling. Floating undercling. A lovely turn. Moves up with the left hand to that small screw on. Small edge for the left tool to make. Oh, just fumbles clip number four. There it is. Just to recap, the men have five minutes and 30 seconds, 17 quick draws. Good afternoon to Barres, who's tuned in all the way from Philippines. Good afternoon to Matilda, who's tuned in in Stockholm. To everybody who's tuned in, it's great to have you all on board. 
we love to to hear from you. Remember, you can contact us using that hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. Whether you have questions, comments, maybe you want to tell us who you think is going to win, whatever it is, get it on the social media channels. We'd love to hear from you. You can contact me directly as well on at Liam Lonsdale on all of the channels. All of them. Every channel. Dmitry Grabenikov now with three minutes 24 on the clock still moving somewhat conservatively in the conservatively in this lower part Kendra we had some early pops yesterday uh, people popped off on this first head wall and um, I think the competitors are still wary of these holds they're very hard to read because of the way that they're painted and they have just small spots where your tool will go on them so when we can't read the holds well from the ground it tends to slow down the competitors as they're climbing Dimitri Grabenikov 10th in the overall rankings placed 6th in Korea 17th in China 9th in Italy Thirty-three seconds behind Chang Hyun Lee of Korea, who had that unfortunate pop just after clip number twelve. If you want to keep up to date with the scores as they happen, you can do so by visiting results.theuiaa.org. They're refreshed live. Click on live results, and it's all there for you to see. Otherwise, you can just stick with the broadcast and we'll do our best to tell you. Dmitry Gravenikov there moving up to make clip number 11. Just making his way up that ice, climbing high up the ice there on the left-hand side. Nice tactic. We saw Alexei Marshalov do something similar yesterday. The athletes don't have to use all the holds, and all of the ice is inbound, so he's actually skipping a move to come into that undercling from a, from a higher position. Something that he can do it in his height. Yeah, his, our, his wingspan there really helped him make that move. Kicks across with that right hand and moves right foot onto that blue volume. You can see in his face that he's starting to feel that pump now as he reaches up and hooks with the right hand, catches it. Dmitry Grabenikov. Moving on that left hand, switches the right leg over the left hand for the figure four. Still moving well with less than 20 seconds to go. 15 seconds on the clock. There's 14 made. You can see that section above him that's been extended. Oh, and he's off. Just as his time was up anyway. Seems pretty happy with that, Kendra. Yeah, I think he is. He um, made it pretty high up on that route. I mean, he, he will know that it's likely that somebody's going to top later on, but he climbed well. Certainly did, and 14 clips made. He really put in a good fight there. just slipped off his tools look how pumped he is <laughs> he's a great athlete and uh i think he gave it everything then yeah and i think yeah, it's always like satisfying it, it's when you can um hack the route a little bit so skipping that hold it is indeed okay let's uh let's switch our attention to Marion thomas big crowd here supporting the french team and they're very very vocal especially for marion kendra 
They are. The French team is known for being loud, which is really fun. Not only is there a French team here, but there's a load of fans as well. There are, and they had a whole group of school kids out yesterday cheering them on as well. Really brought the cavalry along to support their athletes. Looks so far that pace is going to be one of the big deciding factors for this women's route. And she, Song, sorry, in first place with 15 clips made of a total 18. What were you going to say there, Kendra? Well, Marion's moving very quickly here. She is indeed, and we'll get those split times as they happen. She has exactly five minutes on the clock of her six, so the minute elapsed to make it to clip number four. Look at that, 12 seconds ahead of the pace already. with that left hand just right up onto that hold makes clip number five slow down a little bit needs to find that pace again now Ryan Tomas Makes clip number six. You can hear the French cheering for her in the background. If you are enjoying the broadcast, then please do share it with someone that you think might be interested. Very easy to do. Hit that share button wherever you're watching it from. Or even you can comment the name in the chat box. Ryan Tomas makes clip number seven now with three minutes and 26 on the clock. Reaches up with the right hand and approaches that horizontal roof. We saw both, yep, there's the figure four. I was just gonna say we saw both Emer and Honore figure four on that. Ryan Tomas moving out into that horizontal section and reaches up and gets the clip going smart move will it waste precious time though it does interesting that she's tried that especially after yesterday where she tried to clip early and it cost her a few seconds when we know and she knows that time is of the essence it, it just doesn't seem like the smartest move kendra quick draws are worth more points than holds and it's just so tempting i get that i totally get that and i understand the logic but Marion's going to have some idea that clip number 10 is not going to be a, a podium placing position. Rushing for that clip doesn't get her anything other than wasting her time. Look, she's 14 seconds behind after being so far ahead. I agree. She would agree. I'm sure she would. I'm going to tell her after. Definitely one of the crowd favourites, Marion Tomas. Moves now up into that ice section and definitely needs to find some pace. Takes a second to shake, and you can hear the French crowd. Ale, 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 willing her on. They know how important time is. Needs to keep moving now, really doesn't have time to shake. It's the ice box. For first place, Dmitry Gravenikov and Hanare Song. Just starting to look a little bit flustered, Kendra. 
She knows that she has less than a minute here, and this is not enough to be happy with. This is her home structure. This is her home crowd. With 29 seconds remaining, 25 seconds behind. She really needs to pull a miracle out of the bag if she wants to be in with a chance of first place. Doesn't have time to be shaking like that, and I know that sometimes it feels like that's all you've got, but she needs to make one more move, one more move. Get that clip. Seven seconds remain. She needs this next clip. Time up for Marion Thomas. Valiant effort from the French climber. Asks the French crowd for some support. What do we put that down to, Kendra? I really feel like a little bit more experience and she would have stopped shaking and just moved much, much faster and been aggressive to get to that clip. To have that clip so close and to be shaking in the ice just didn't seem like the smartest smartest idea without wishing to be too critical i think she just had a few small experience things that slowed her down that the hold at the top of the first head wall she didn't immediately read it and go into a figure four to get up into the undercling and then trying to make that clip early right above that also just every little bit makes a difference yeah yeah i totally agree and uh, I, I don't wish to be too critical but you know, we can be critical, we can analyze, we can talk about these things. We have the luxury of a, a screen and action replays in front of us. And um, yeah, it's nothing that I wouldn't say to Marion either. And it's really great actually to be so deeply involved with the community and to be able to have these chats. After every comp pretty much, I, I always say, you know, what happened or how do you feel? And, and we get some really in-depth feedback. So yeah, great effort from Marion Tomas. Isn't it enough to see her into first place provisionally. That will see her into uh, third place provisionally. Sorry, no, you have to excuse me. Second place provisionally ahead of Ema McSwiggin. Next athlete out. Yesterday he was wearing a head torch. Today it's not necessary. Alexei Marshalov of Russia. He was my favorite climb of the semifinals yesterday. I'm so happy that I was out early and I got to watch him because he just skipped the whole roof by going out onto the ice that was inbounds, and it was genius. It was very, very smart climbing from Alexei Marshalov. I, um, I was very impressed, and especially when I watched back the replay, because during the actual climb itself, we were somewhat distracted, having two athletes on the wall at once, and you know, there's so much going on during those semifinals, it's easy to miss things, but he really, really excelled in that semifinal yesterday, and if you didn't catch it, don't worry, you can see the replay on YouTube, on the UIAA channel, uh, that's up there forever and ever. So, uh, yeah, you can always watch that semi-final back and find Alexei Marshalov's amazing effort. Places his left tool, matches in to take it with a high grip with the left hand on that very small edge into the floating undercling. Moves up with the right hand. We've not seen him at many rounds this season. Alexei, Alexei Marshalov currently sits even outside of the top 20, I think. Let me just check that. No, just inside the top 20. He's 19th, finished 9th in Switzerland and 16th in Italy. Moving over this step in the structure. You see there, the panels kick out and back again. Gives the athletes time if they want to kick into those panels and get some weight through the feet, but really, we know they don't really have time to do that. They don't, and it can be a little awkward getting on top of that. small edge with the left hand reaches up with the right just behind the pace set by Chen Hyun Lee clip seven made the 
into the Stein. And now into the horizontal section of the structure. Again, climbing onto that ice and cutting loose on the right hand to kick in underneath into the box. Moves up towards clip number 11 as he climbs through the ice. Two minutes and 19 seconds on the clock. There's clip 12. He's in a good position in the ice with the left hand. He went to skip that move, and that gives you an idea of the difference of size of Grabenikov and Marshalov. Grabenikov reached into that very easily, but Marshalov a little bit of trouble. Makes it work for him eventually. He comes into the high grip with the left hand where Chang Hyun Lee fell. Oh, and he's off. We'll see that on the replay, but it looked like he didn't quite get the position with the right tool and then lost tension with the left. Very steep part of the wall, that Petra. I know I said Petra, but I meant Kendra. <laughs> it's the same word, but, <laughs> but for two, three letters. <laughs> You're right. It's the same, but different. I must have been reading Petra's name on my sheet. It's all good. I'll take it if I can get a little bit of her climbing. You've both been in the commentary booth with me this season. So, I'm, you know, I'm just not it. At least I didn't call you John. Agreed. <laughs> Alexei Marshalov finishes his attempt at this finals route just past clip number 12. That left pick popping out, not able to hold the swing. And our next athlete, our first Russian athlete in the women's competition is Mariam Filipova. Just to remind you, all eight of these female athletes topped the route yesterday, the order coming down to time. Marian Filipova moving up the first section of ice to move into that wooden section. And past that first clip. Moves nicely through that lower section. Looks a little bit tense. Interesting that there was a small pop there. The shoulders were really, really elevated then. And you can tell how relaxed the climber is often by their shoulder position. That raised shoulder isn't a strong position either. Um, several years ago now, I was going to say not that long ago, but now I think about it. Several years ago, I um, did some unofficial research into shoulder position uh, after one of my climbing partners had a very bad shoulder injury. and. One of the things that I really noticed was when the shoulder is up and forward, it's very prone and very weak. And if you watch the strongest ice climbers and as well with sport climbing, the shoulders that are down and back are much more powerful, much more stable, and they're able to pull in these very difficult positions. So when we see those shoulders raised, and I'll try and point it out to you again in a second, when we see them raised, it's kind of a danger sign. You know, it's more prone to injury, but it's also a weaker position just in general terms of the move. Marion Filipova seems to be regaining that relaxed state now as she moves higher up the route. Makes clip six. Just 
struggling to find a placement there. And I see what you mean, Kendra. That would be impossible to read from the floor. Yeah, last night's semifinals route, the the breadth of knowledge and experience that we have in that women's group, they all stood at the bottom of that route and were like, we don't know what these holds are. They're painted dark. It's dark out. There's a spotlight randomly shining over the wall, and everybody went back into isolation and was like, well, I guess we'll find out when we climb. <laughs> hey, you did well yesterday. I made it into semifinals. I, I was excited really about well. that. Well, thank you. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was stoked to see you in the semis, and you climbed like you deserved to be there. Thank you. And Mary and Philippa were moving now, fig four over the left hand. You saw how quickly she just moved into that. She knew that that's what she needed to do there. She's been competing for 10 years. Yeah, very, very experienced. And that's what we're talking about, as we talked about before with Marion. Sometimes that lack of experience, there's a hesitation, there's a pause between deciding which way to throw the move, which leg to throw into the figure four, whether to do a figure four or just to lock it down for the pulver. Fully committed in that decision before she'd even got to the hold. And it'll be interesting to see where she ranks in the time as she reaches up to make clip 10. Nice work. A lot of these athletes look, make those clips very, look very easy to clip, but those long swinging draws can actually be quite difficult to, to get in your hand and get clipped. Yeah, for sure. Again, it comes down to experience and you see places the finger inside the draw to secure it and then push the rope into it. Filipova now with the clip 10 was 10 seconds ahead. We'll get the next split in a few seconds. There, it's six seconds ahead of Hanare Song. Kendra, is it true that this is your favorite song? I wonder if you play along then. Obviously not. <laughs> you don't call the Kendra no sense of humor stretch for nothing. <laughs> just play, just play. I'm just worried there that Kendra's about to punch me while we're commentating. Marianne Filippova now with one minute 20 on the clock. Makes clip number 12 and advances up that ice section. See clip 14 below her as she reaches up to make clip 13. As she said, the leg there to keep that slack out. Reaches right to the left side of the ice, places that good solid hook with the left hand. You reckon it'd be possible to span all the way across to the ice on the other side there, Kendra? Hard to say. I mean, for Dimitri, <laughs> yes. I'm just wondering. If any of the competitors ever... Oh, no, she's off! I was not expecting that. But she was also pulling the rope and not getting slack, so I don't know what was going on there. Let's take a look at that replay. Let's see the, the tool. So she's in a solid position. And that's a definite pop with the left hand. Let's see if we can see it from another angle. It looks like you saw it. The ice was just, uh, sorry, the rope was just caught around the ice as she was trying to pull that slack in. And uh, hard to say for sure, but it looks like that extra force from the pull just lost some of the isolation that she had in that left hand and that popped her out of there. I agree. Unfortunately, that's not a technical because it was the ice that was holding the rope, if that's the case. Absolute nightmare for Marion Philippe. It's not her season. She's not had a bad year, it has to be said, but she's not quite managed to get on that podium yet. 13th in Korea, 4th in Switzerland, 13th in Italy. Let's take a look at the provisional rankings as Mohamed Rezasef Darian begins his climb. I can give you those rankings now. In the women's competition, Ima McSwigan is fourth, Marianne Philippova third, Marianne Tomas second, Hamnare Song still 
in first. And as Mohamed Reza Safdarian begins his route and climbs up into that, looks like he's got a Stein there, actually, Kendra. He does, but I think he's going to have to turn that. Yeah, there goes yeah, floating. The floating undercling. Uh, the men's results at the moment, third place is Chang Hyun Lee. Second place, Alexei Marshalov. First place, Dmitry Grabenikov, with our fourth athlete, Mohamed Reza Safdarian, making his way. Five minutes, 30 seconds on the clock for the beginning. He's already just oh, just under a minute, four minutes, 31 exactly remaining. Uh, 17 quick draws total on this route as he moves past five, onwards towards clip number six. Of course, Mohamed Reza Safdarian was the first Iranian athlete to ever take a medal in a ice climbing competition for an Iranian athlete. Uh, it was the bronze medal in South Spain 2007 to 18, 2018. And then the following weekend in Ravenstein, he took the version of a gold medal for a really an athlete, which is an amazing achievement. No medals so far this season. It's been very, very close. Out behind him to make clip number eight. Very nice and fast into that. Figure nine with the right leg over the right hand. Slightly ahead of the pace so far, which is what we would expect from Mohamed Reza Safdarian. Very quick athlete, makes clip number nine. Interesting to see how each athlete interprets the ice and which part of it they use. There are drilled holes in most of this ice, but many of them are not marked. Some of them are marked with those little blue spray paint dots. Climbs higher into that ice on the left-hand side of the structure now. seconds ahead of the pace takes the next clip Number 12 opts to use that hook unlike the Russians who continued at the ice reaches into that powerful undercling move still 19 seconds ahead of the pace matches him with the left tool and you can see how steep oh and he's off Another athlete falling foul to that very tricky move with the right hand. That was a surprise, Kendra. He was moving so well. Very surprising. Let's see that one more time. Left hand popped first. Interesting. That's what happened to Chang Chun Lee as well. Wow. Let's watch it again one more time. Really nice close angle there. Great work, Mr. Cameraman. Oh, and he's just moved out. <laughs> I take it back. Sack him. No, I'm joking. Lovely shots there. Great work, as always, from our camera team. And you can see a little look of um, bemusement, almost, from Mohamed Reza Safdarian. It's never a good sign when an athlete unties their own rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Olga Kozak was talking about that yesterday um, in our route analysis. She said... She always knows that she's tried hard when someone has to untie for her because she's totally boxed. Next athlete, this competition in all black. Maria Tolkadina. The Ice Queen. Current ranked number one in the overall rankings. She's taken three golds so far this season. One in Korea, one in China, one in Italy. Fourth gold here would guarantee her the overall title. Ready to talk our fifth athlete in the women's competition. Still to climb, Yun Xion Shin, Zainab Kobra Musavi, and Petra Klingler.
Mm -hmm. Hey, Liam, can you explain how somebody is going to, could already be um, winning the whole series when we still have one more competition? Yeah. Uh, you get 100 points for a win, and Maria has won three rounds. She has 100 points, and Shin has 284 points. She's 60 points behind them, and oh no, Wunshin Shin's in the final. Hmm. Okay, let me do the maths quickly. If she wins here, that puts her on 440 points. Shin Shin, Shin if she comes, says so she comes eighth at the worst possible result, which would give her. 40 points, that would put Winchin Shin on 320, and if she won, she'd be on 420, then she'd win. So she could win. She's not guaranteed. I have to take it back. Except one of them gets dropped. Oh, yeah, one result gets dropped. Oh, yeah, so she'll have 400 points if she wins here. 500 points if she wins in the USA. I don't even know. Nobody knows what it means. No, I think you're right. I think that she would secure first place. If, if she, she wins it. here. Yeah. Because she'll have four first place. Yeah, and, and it's impossible to Five competitions will count towards your overall score. Exactly. And so nobody else will be able to win four. And Wun Shun Shin, who's her closest competitor, has a second, a first, a second, and a 14th, which massively reduces her points potential. Even if she drops that... 14th position and wins the next one she wouldn't have enough points I knew there was logic in what I was saying it made me nervous then Kendra I was panicking sorry and maths isn't my strong point it really isn't I got an A in maths at school I worked really really hard for it and I'm I'm absolutely terrible at it 35 seconds ahead of the pace I can tell you that much I don't need to be Einstein to see that 35 he wasn't even a mathematician 35 seconds ahead of the pace Maria Tolokanina now into that roof Moves up to the next hole below click number 10 and throws the right leg over the left hand for that figure four position. There's clip 10. All of the years of experience show in her efficiency, moving onto these holds, clipping, everything. Yeah, it's really phenomenal, and I uh, I have mentioned it a couple of times this weekend, and I've mentioned it on my social media too, but we did an interview with Maria Tolokanina in Rabenstein, and um, Maria's English is, is okay, it's not amazing, uh, so we did the interview in Russian, and we didn't really know what she was saying, but I just had a really good feeling that the translation was going to come out brilliantly, and the interview is by far one of the best we've ever done. Uh, I do encourage you to, to head over to the UIAA YouTube channel, and watch that Maria Tolkienina video. It's really beautiful and gives you an insight into one of the sport's true great athletes. Maria Tolkienina now with two minutes and five seconds on the clock, moving leftwards into that ice position. Clip 14 beckoning. Reaches down. Look at that, Kendra. 46 seconds ahead of the pace. This is the pace she needs to be on and keep up to make it to the top. Reaches up with the left hand into the ice. And this is the steepest ice section on the route now. Need to ask somebody to turn the big light on. It's getting quite dark out there. It's not quite as dark as it appears on your screen, I have to say. But it's not um, not blatant sunshine. Maria Tolokanin now makes clip 15. Continues through this ice section. A minute and six seconds faster than Hanare Song making that clip. Stands to reason as Hanare Song run out of time there. 18 clips to be made and she's got less than a minute to make them. 57 seconds left on the clock. Maria Tolokanina of Russia moving ever closer to that top spot. Up onto the corner of that entreprise volume. into the Gaston position, makes clip number 16. 30 seconds remain, Kendra, I don't wanna call it, but that's a lot to ask even of Maria Tolokanina. 
I'm just loving watching her climb this. She's being super efficient and fast. 15 seconds remaining. Efficient and fast is exactly what she's being. And she takes that granite hold with the left tool. Willing her on with seven seconds on the clock. That top is so, so close. Stands up off the volume and rope drag is so intense. The time's up and it's not going to count. Oh, Maria Tolokanina, so, so close. Kendra, summarize that one for me. She moved very consistently and efficiently up that whole route, but that just not enough time to get through all of that. There's a lot of traversing, a lot of ground to cover, and only six minutes. <sighs> Felt like I held my breath for that six minutes. Um, I'm very interested now because Maria Tolokanina, as we've just said, has been dominant all season. She's also been one of the fastest all season. Now, we did see in qualifying, uh, excuse me, in semi finals yesterday that there were several athletes faster, three in fact, faster than her. Um, I wonder if she's getting a little bit tired. But Petra Klingler, Zenab Kovar Musavi, and Yun Shun Shin still to climb and all with. I would say a pretty decent shot at that podium. Rachel Kanina climbs away into first place and takes her seat in the ice box next to current first place Dmitry Grabenikov. Next athlete in the men's competition is Nikolai Kuzovlev. Nikolai Kuzovlev, another Russian that's been dominant this season makes Maria Tolkanina's record look bad. Three gold medals and one silver medal, 380 points. A win here would definitely, definitely put him into an unassailable lead, a lead there. Even Hyung Park, who's current second place, wouldn't be able to catch up. Um, yeah, he's, he's way ahead of the pack. He is, and you know, the first after the first two comps, we started. People started asking questions like, "Has anybody ever gotten all first place in a season?" Uh, my knowledge, not looking at my spreadsheet of glory, I'm going to say no. That's never happened. If you go back far enough to when we only had three World Cups in a season, it has been done. Okay, my records don't go back that far. Exactly. My records that so I have available to me go back to 2011. Yeah, so we've all agreed it's pretty much not happened in modern. If it happened before 2011, did it happen? Did it even happen? If it wasn't on Instagram, was it real? Depends on what world you live in. <laughs> Nikolai Kuzovlev moving really quickly through this low section. Clip number five made as he moves on to that panel with this slight kick in it. I need a better name for that, Kendra. Help me out. What do we call that? What can we call it? Hump? No, I don't like that. Step. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah? Okay. I feel like it needs a character. Mystery Step. There's nothing mysterious about was, it. Where was it last year that we were naming the hanging? Oh, yeah. Was that two years ago? That was last year, and it was in... Um, ho, 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 we had the hanging thing, and we had some amazing names coming in for it. I can't even remember the what, what we chose in the end, but it was a good one. One second ahead of the pace. Nikolai Kuzovlev as he reaches up a deep lock off the figure four on the left hand to take the hole on the right. Makes clip number nine. Eleven seconds ahead of the pace. Moves up into the ice section now. It's clip number 11. Let's see what he does with this move. He does opt for that higher position. Thirteen seconds ahead of the pace. Reaches under internet very powerful undercut move. It's caught a few climbers out. Nikolai Kuzovlev, not one of them, as he steps across easily into that right-hand position. So he took that hold on the right? He did. 
where Dreza had tried to take it directly on the left. Same as uh, Alexi Marshalov as well. Into that good hook with the right hand. He has the left leg over the right hand into the figure four, switches it back to left leg over left hand for the figure nine. Lovely hold there into that Stein with the right. Very, very steep. It's hard to work out that angle. We're completely underneath him. It's almost horizontal, this section of wall. You see the photographers peering over the top. Still has four more clips to make. One minute 40 to make them. One minute, 28 seconds ahead of the pace. Makes clip 15. One minute, 10 seconds on the clock as he reaches out with the left hand, misses it first time. He's in first place now with that 15th clip made. Cuts loose and kicks in hard as he centers his body below that hold. Switches the right hand into the high grip. Figure four over the right hand and he's got 35 seconds remaining. Again, this is a lot to ask, 30 seconds left. Will he make clip 18 into that very powerful undercling position? A lot of tension required. 17 seconds left. Still only got clip 15 made. 10 seconds on the clock. There's clip 16. Five seconds remain. Oh, and he catches the top hold and misses it. He goes flying. Tool goes flying. He was extraordinarily close. No top for Nikolai Kuzovlev, who threw everything he had. Everything he had at that one. Now, I need to check my information because I have it here that there's 18 clubs for the men. But it's actually uh, 17. Yeah, so no problem. 17 clubs for the men. He was one before the top. Good, yeah, glad we got that cleared up. He is in provisional first place. And again, I think it's gonna come down to uh, to the top for the speed. I think there's one man that's definitely capable of doing it. I'm looking at the names on the list remaining to climb. Hyung Park, Luna Ladevon, and Yannick Latard, the Korean Ice King, French Boy Wonder, and Swiss Air. I'll leave it to you guys at home to work out which you think is going to be the athlete that is able to top and able to top in the fastest time. Maybe you might want to comment on which you think it is. Yunchun Shin tying in to her route. Should we take a quick look at the results so far? I can tell you that in the men's competition. Fifth place is Chang Hyun Lee of Korea. Well, let's do the women's first. Fifth place is Ima Mixwigan of Ireland. Fourth place, Marianne Filipova of Russia. Third place, Marianne Tomas of France. Second place, Han Nare Song of Korea. And first place is Maria Tolokanina of Russia. In the men's competition, fifth place is Chang Hyun Lee of Korea. Fourth place is Mohamed Reza Safdarian of Iran. Third place, Alexei Marshalov of Russia. Second place, Dmitry Govenikov of Russia. First place, also for Russia, is Nikolai Kuzovlev. Now, Unsyon Shin, current second place in the overall rankings, took gold medal in Sasfe in fine style. Capable of topping here, Kendra? Absolutely. I wanted to, I looked up the times from semifinals last night because we were talking about how fast Maria Tolokanina is known for being. Yes. And so she was only two one hundredths of a second 
behind Sunny. And then Zena Cobra only had... No, those are minutes, mate. Four minutes, 43 seconds. So, it's, okay. So, two tenths. Two whole seconds. 443, 441. Yeah, so four minutes and 41 seconds, four minutes and 43 Correct. seconds. So they were only... Two seconds two apart. <laughs> Want to do it again? I was at speed this morning. <laughs> you were at speed this morning. <laughs> okay, you called me the wrong name. I've got minutes That's, and seconds yeah, confused. Yeah, we're good. We're even, <laughs> Stevens. Dear me. Still two seconds. A regular pair of Fibonacci's over here. Kendra Stretch and myself. Having a little bit of trouble with the uh, with our numbers this afternoon. Bear with us. We're doing our best. We're not here because we're good at maths. We're here because we know about climbing. Yunxian Shin climbing now up the underside of that steep wooden section. Directly opposite the commentary booth. Seven seconds behind Maria Tolokanina. She's taking that hold very interestingly there, but she stayed on. Another client dressed in all black. now straight into that figure four over the left hand inverts the shoulder to take that Stein very powerful move for the shoulder but in Shin is a phenomenal athlete reaches up to place that hook in the whole bike clip number nine and reaches behind her onto the box Cuts loose and opts to go into the figure nine. Nice little adjustment there. She was thinking of the four. We saw her just switch it around. Get to that next hold. Makes clip ten. seconds behind Maria on that split there. She's going to have to speed it up to make it to the top. Yeah, and I wonder if Yun uh, Chun Shin will deploy some skipping tactics, whether she might miss some moves in this upper section. She is one of the taller athletes. Positive ape index. Maybe she'll be the first climber to skip that move in the middle and go straight from the ice to the other side. I think it's definitely possible. Just a foot position intricacy. This is that left tool. And removes it, not quite happy with the position. There's clip 13. Okay, left tool in. Now I think it is possible to kick that right foot in hard and swing all the way out to the other side of the ice. I think it may be possible, but the question will be, is the power that it takes mm. to hold the swing over worth it? We need an athlete with real explosive power. And, hmm, yeah, I think you're right. Perhaps not the most efficient. Clip 14 made, and she's 30 seconds behind Maria Tolkanina. Fast in this ice section. Clip 15 made. 41 seconds left on the clock. Maria Tolokanina made clip 16, was almost at 17. Yun Shin, 33 seconds, may have left herself with too much to do. She's up with that right hand. 15 seconds on the clock. Oh, a 
Dragon doesn't quite make Clip 16. There's so much drag in the system. There it is. Five seconds left. She's in second place now behind Maria Tolokanina. It's time out for Yun Xion Shin. Maria Tolokanina stays in the ice box. Remains in first place. Waiting to find out what her result was, and our next athlete is another Korean. We go to Hyung Park in just a few seconds, but first let's take a look at the replays. Perhaps we won't look at those replays. Young Park there preparing to climb. Getting nice and tied in, secured before making his first moves. Oof. Sharp exhale of breath. And here he goes, five minutes 30 on the clock. Hyung Park out of the gates very quickly there, Kendra. He's just flying up this. I think we can expect him to keep this pace. Yeah, inclined to agree, and despite him being one of the older athletes, uh, 37 years old, I believe he is, he still moves with such aggression, such as athleticism. Moving up towards clip number four. Bah, look at that already, 11 seconds ahead of the pace set by Chang Kyung Lee. To this stepped feature, which we have now dubbed the naughty step. Reaches up with the right hand. Makes that next clip and continues now. Strong position with that left hand in that hook. Makes clip number six. He looks really relaxed. <laughs> he looks relaxed. He looks fast. He looks like he's nine seconds ahead of the pace so far. Young Park moving exceptionally well through this first part of the route and effortlessly slices through the air to place that right leg over the right hand, left leg over underneath him rather there. Kicks strong into the box and makes clip number nine. Moves into that right hand ice section. Clip 10 made. Just one second ahead of Nikolai Kozovlev now with three minutes and three seconds left on the clock. Looks like he's going to opt for that step down move as he takes the rope out to clip number 12. Lots of Korean fans now cheering on the Korean Ice King. Opts to take the edge. Interesting that he'd gone so high to then come back down seven seconds ahead of Kuzovlev. Up into that undercling move. Matches him with the left tool in that high grip, which is the position he needs to be in. 
Look at that, he's gone out with the right hand, so strong in the shoulder, brilliant chest stability, excellent back strength. He's not even gonna match in on that hold, just reaches straight up with the right hand and he's accelerating now, two minutes and five seconds on the clock for Hyung Park. is down, he's 11 seconds behind because of left, lost a little bit of time doing that move onto the edge. Still looks very, very calm, Kendra. This is a beautiful climb. Big reach off that figure four with the left hand and right leg and he's a second ahead of Kuzovlev again. The two climbers neck and neck really in those splits. Just struggling to find that position on the next move. One minute, 10 seconds remaining. Lots of slack in the system now as he reaches up to make clip. 15, there it is. 17 clips total for these guys. Less than a minute remaining. Kicks in hard with that right foot, and moves that body weight out and left. He needs to take that next hold up on the black volume above him. You can see that as he throws the left leg over the right hand for the figure four. Thirty seconds left. Into that powerful undercoat, and he's popped and sparks flew then. Absolutely sensational, and he really gave it everything that he had. Second place so far for Hyung Park, and let's see if we can see those sparks again. He was putting so much force through that right hand. Pops out, and wow, that was really quite special. It's a great effort from Hyung Park, but just not quite good enough to see him through to that ice box and to the first place. He'll be in second place ahead of Dmitry Gobekov and behind Nikolai Kozovlev. Next athlete in the men's competition is Luna Ladovon, but before that, we'll have Zainab Kobra Musavi. Great to see her back in the finals. This is her first competition of the season. Right. Last year she did the whole season. This year we've not really seen her. Any idea why that is, Kendra? Well, there's a lot of politics going on globally, and um, it's made it harder for uh, many of the athletes to travel, but especially the Iranian team. Mm -hmm. Not just athletes as well. Well, yes. <laughs> but yeah. And um, so, I mean, there, there's financial reasons and there's just some logistical reasons too, but I know she's super excited to be here. She's, she's climbing wonderful. Um, she's obviously still been training hard and it's great to have her back. Certainly is. And last year she was formidable. She was a regular um, finals qualifier. Didn't quite make it to the podium, but was painfully close a few times. Perhaps today could be that fairy tale moment. We already have an Iranian man who has taken two medals from the Brazil South Dayan in this competition, but maybe this could be the turn of an Iranian woman. Name of the game on this women's route seems to be speed. No woman has managed to top this route yet. Our penultimate athlete, Zenab Kobra Musavi. We're doing her best to get up there. Following her will be our final athlete, first place qualifier, Petra Klingler of Switzerland. Two more men still to climb, Luna Ladevon and Yannick Glatard.
six minutes start the clock for the athlete. She's already had over a minute, one minute, then 10 seconds elapsed, 4.47 on the clock now. And as those splits start to come in, I think we can expect to see her a little behind the pace, Kendra. I think you're right, Liam. Moving now towards step number six, four minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, right down there. Somewhere kind of lower middle of the pack. great close-up of um, the holds there. There's a lot of these holds. They're Swiss Sam holds and they're a rock. Samuel Clavier and the Swiss climber making those rock holds from rock finding the river uh, close to Sazfe, which really gives them a undesirable amount of friction, or rather undesirable lack of friction would be a better way to put it. Moving now up in towards that steep section. Places the hook with that left hand. It's clip number eight. Just under three minutes remaining, 2.57 on the clock. She's behind her to get that hook with the right hand. She's got that in the backhand position. Seems comfortable for her to reach out then with that left hand. Opting to kick underside before making that move with the left onto the hook. And now she's breaking out of the roof with the right hand. Interesting that she's hopped into clip so late on that one, Kendra. Actually, this is the hold that Maria and um, a couple of the other competitors clipped from. It's the closest yeah, hold. for sure. Moving up now. Oh, little step across. Just trying to find that pace. Desperately needs to find some pace as she approaches this ice section. Cup number 11. There's clip 12. Look at that. Over a minute behind the pace set by Tolokanina. Savi, the penultimate female athlete. Petra Klingler to follow, and then Luna Ladovan and Yannick Latard. Definitely stick with us for the action as this final unfolds. If you are just joining us, very warm welcome to the men's and women's lead finals, the fifth of the season here in champigny en vaumois You're watching Zeynep Kobrin Musavi climbing in the women's final, the penultimate athlete. My name's Liam Lonsdale. I'm joined today by the USA's Kendra Stritch in the commentary booth. It's great to have you on board, and you can, of course, get involved with the broadcast, as always, by using the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing or by tagging me directly. Search for at Liam Lonsdale. Zainab Kubrin Savino makes it into the ice, and that's her off just as the time was about to run out, just a little bit pumped perhaps lacking the season fitness 
with it being her first comp and her first final of the season. She's going to sit in seventh place ahead of Ema McSwiggan. As I said, one more athlete remaining in the ladies' competition. Oh, and the ice just ripped there. Bit of a clean to climb next. But before that, we will have local climber Luna Ladevon. Very, very strong athlete. If you've been tuned in since the beginning of the broadcast, you will have seen the interview that we shot with Luna and his brother Tristan. If you missed it, don't worry. It will be on the UIAA YouTube channel. Uh, later today, if not that, then tomorrow. Nice little profile on those guys and their relationship, their competition career so far and their ambition for the future. Just going to be a, a very short delay while they retrieve that tool, but hopefully we'll be able to start the men's imminently. There is Luna Ladevon. Let's take a quick look at the men's results so far. Sixth place, Chen Hyun Lee of Korea. Fifth place, Mohamed Reza Safdarian of Iran. Fourth place, Alexei Marshalov of Russia. Third place, currently sitting in bronze medal position, Dmitry Gabenikov of Russia. Second place, currently sitting in silver medal position, is Hyung Park of Korea. And first place, currently sitting in that gold medal position, is Nikolai Kuzovlev. Still two athletes remaining. No athlete has topped yet. Luna Laravant and Yannick Latard both still to climb and both still with an attempt at that top of the route. What do you think, Kendra? Is it going to happen? Is it possible? It's absolutely possible. Luna can climb very quickly and um, yeah, if he can just read this route correctly, I think he can fly to the top. Well, it's not a flying competition, it's a climbing competition, so Let's hope he maintains contact with the structure and stays within the rules. That'd be a technical, wouldn't it? That'd be a first in the technical incident book. I don't know. If you clipped every quick draw, wouldn't flying still be in the... <laughs> I'll get back to you, Kendra. I will, del I will uh, consult the Ice Climbing Commission and we'll get back to you in the near future. See the light fading now as the sun sets here in champigny en -Vanois. Still just about bright enough for the athletes to see despite the uh, the dark picture on your screen. Don't worry about that. We have got the floodlights on and the uh, the spotlight will be on soon. But the position on the structure and it being inside the structure makes it difficult to light with the spot. <laughs> to the small pebble below just above the lip rather of the naughty step decides to use it with his hand readjusts the tool takes it in the high grip with the left hand and makes that clip really needs to pick up the pace in this lower section reaches up past the cl sixth clip towards number seven and moves aggressively between each of those holds just seems to be pausing ever so slightly between each set of moves though what we need is a really silky smooth rhythm like a rhythmic flow to those moves to enable him to make up that time. And we can see already 23 seconds behind Xiong Park. And it's interesting, Kendra, he's 23 seconds behind without stopping. It's just that efficiency of movement. So the lack of hesitation on each hold. Thanks, clip number 10. Reaches into the ice now and moves ever upwards to make clip number 11. 
Luna's a, a taller athlete. Do you think we're going to see him skip the move here? It's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, I'd like to think so. This is his home structure. He's very experienced. You'll know the limitations of the moves and what he can and can't do. But it seems, judging from this clipping position, that he's not going to do that. And it, it's like he's never climbed here before. Come on, Luna. I mean, these are small mistakes, and perhaps it's nerves, perhaps it's pressure. But um, he really shouldn't be getting caught up in that position. We expect you know, the local competitors to know all those little tricks, and you can see the rope drag, the rope not falling back through. Less than two minutes remaining, 1.55 on the clock for Luna Ladevon. Hometown crowd is getting loud now, cheering him on. Really cheering him on, and the atmosphere ever increasing as he reaches up with that left hand to the hook with the right. Another big clip there for 13. Misses it first time, and it's these precious seconds wasted. Come on, Luna. These precious seconds wasted that cost places on the podium. Reaches underneath into the Stein. Drops down. Big swing up. Very efficient movement now. Much better from Luna Ladevon. One minute and ten seconds on the clock. Better clipping as well. Number 14 made. Into the figure four. Left leg over. It's his right leg over his left hand. Misses that move twice, but hits it third time. Needs to keep moving now. 34 seconds behind Kuzovlev in park. Forty-five seconds on the clock, and the crowd are going wild. Come on, Luna, get the hold first. Take the hold, please. Into the figure four with the left. It might work. He's out. He's just short. Reaches across in that backhand grip. Ale Luna, come on. You can see him slowing and tiring with 20 seconds on the clock. Makes clip 15. 10 seconds remaining. Luna Ladevon now. Moving as fast as he can. Can he get up there? His time's up. So he's going to sit in third place now. Made clip 15, which puts him ahead of Dmitry Glebenikov with 14, but didn't get to the shine in time, which puts him behind Hyung Park. Big cheers from the crowd. And a decent effort from Luna Ladevon. What do you think, Kendra? I don't think it's going to be enough for a podium. Neither do I. What do you think of the? Uh, what do you think of his climbing there? I think he, the climbing that we saw on that upper part. I wish we had seen that the whole way. Yeah, just looked a little bit, a little bit slow in the lower part. See his coach in the background there. just wasn't quite precise enough when he needed to be. That was that moment, you know, three or four seconds wasted there, four or five seconds wasted on that clip prior to that. It's all those seconds added up that make the difference between taking the next hold and being on the podium and not. There's our final female athlete. She's the only athlete to have ever made gold medal in ice climbing and also in bouldering. Won in Kirov 2015 and in China 2016. Fun fact about Petra in sport climbing, she's only ever been in the podium twice, both times with gold medals. That's a pretty good stat though. It is a good stat. Weird that you've got the same name as well. <laughs> Petra Klingler there begins her route and if anyone has the ability to move explosively fast, then it is Petra Klingler. She's been doing a lot of speed climbing training for the Olympic qualification in sport climbing this year. So let's see how she fares. Nice 
nice and efficient through this first part of the route. to get past clip 16 to win this competition. She's already four seconds ahead of the pace set by Tolokanina. The fact that we've had no tops means that this competition is very exciting indeed. A top would guarantee a win, of course. Reaches up with that left tool to the left side of the splinter. There's clip six. He needs to keep that pace. Moves up with the right hand. To that small edge that she's in just checks it with her hand incredibly strong fingers Petra Klingler Slipping slightly there in the uh, clip split. She did move a little bit slower through that section. Decides to use a hand on that next hold. Oh, Petra, don't make this mistake again. Into that Stein. I had flashbacks to the fall that she took in Sazfe after she came up short using her hands on a hold. It's understandable why she does it though. It was the reason that she took Golden Kirov. Right leg over left hand into the figure four to make clip number 10. There's a big Swiss contingent here, and uh, you can hear them cheering on their teammate. Yeah, indeed, there's a lot of the Swiss athletes made it over to Champagny, which is great to see. And um, disappointingly for you in the finals, but great that the two that did make it through qualified in first place, Yannick Glattard and Petra Klingler, both first place qualifiers today. And now we really need to see Petra picking up that pace. 24 seconds behind Tolokanina. Better from her. Still needs to accelerate. Looking for those placements. Yeah, really nice flick of the feet. Skipping those feet across the ice. Has the power to rely more on her arms in this steep section rather than having to kick in. Makes clip 13. Just struggles to find that placement. Come on, Petra. Reaches over and matches in the high grip. Easily down into the Stein with that. Oh, a little pop. She manages to stay on the wall. It's going to cost her some valuable power. Just looks a little bit flustered. Better this time into that Gaston move and reaches over onto the ice and really needs to accelerate now. If she can make it past clip 15, then she'll bump Hanare Song out of third place. 51 seconds remaining. We need to see something really fast. Those athletes look very relaxed indeed in the ice box. Ale Petra, come on. Moves up into the upper part of the ice. There's clip 15. 
moves further again through this ice section, traversing leftwards with 27 seconds to go. Clip 16 is the standard for silver medal, and with only 20 seconds on the clock, I don't think it's going to be possible. She's in that figure nine. Needs to hit that next hole to be definitely ahead of Hanmare Song. She is ahead now. 10 seconds left. She's in bronze medal position. Four seconds. Very quick movement now, but it's too little, too late. Time is up for Petra Klingler as she reaches up to make clip 16 anyway. It's a bronze medal here for Petra Klingler of Switzerland. Silver medal for Yunsyun Shin of South Korea and gold medal, another one, Kendra, for Maria Tolokanina of Russia. Unstoppable. See that move, the right tool, just not in a particularly good spot there. Watch that left hand. Whoa. Went for the Stein, but really needed to be in the upper part of that hold, and she readjusted second time round. I think she'll be pleased with the bronze even though she slipped down a couple of places from the semi-finals. She's had very little time on her tools to train this year, so to come away with a bronze medal at all is, is phenomenal. She told me last night that she was excited to be here and was feeling good, but was also feeling out of her element. Well, if that's Petra out of her element, I'd love to see her in her element. Bronze medal here in Sazfe. Goes over to congratulate Maria Tolokanina. We have one more athlete. One more athlete remaining. Those are the results. Petra Klingler, 15.271. Munshan Shin, 16.28. Maria Tolokanina, 16.31. Those are provisional results. We have to wait to see if the judges uh, the judges sign those results off. We have to leave a little bit of time for appeals. And there's Yannick Glatard, our final male athlete, another Swiss climber. He's only young, but he's definitely one of the greats. Hard. prepares himself for his attempt at this finals route the standard to beat set by Nikolai Kuzovlev only one person has managed to beat Kuzovlev this year and that is Yannick Lutard 16.321 is the score set by Nikolai Kuzovlev that's clip 16 third hold and the scores go down from there, from how he took the hole, where his lowest hand was, and, and what he did with it. Need to see pace, need to see confidence, need to see something special from Yannick Latard. Swiss Air has done it before. We'll see what he can make out of this finals route here tonight. I feel like at this point I should do some sort of briefing, like... Please place your trade tables away and put your seats in the upright position. Something like that. I'm not going to do it, don't worry. The exits are here. <laughs> yeah. We are winding down on our time here in Europe. Only one more competition after this in the World Cup Series in Denver in two weeks. Indeed, from here we go to Denver. A little break in between. Yannick Lutard slightly behind the pace so far. Mahondra Zasafdarian was one minute elapsed when he got there. Yannick Lutard has four minutes and one second on the clock. His girlfriend there in the green jacket. Didn't quite see, but possibly his mum stood next to it. Whole Glatard family here to support him. 
Now he's up there, 11 seconds off the pace. Second fastest to this point. Really matured over the past couple of years. It's great to see his climbing style evolving. Took a year off competitions to complete his mountain guide training. He's now an aspirant mountain guide in Switzerland. Very highly qualified bunch of men and ladies. He'll keep being an aspirant until he qualifies as a fully fledged mountain guide in a couple of years time. Just behind Cousin Levin Park now, makes that next clip. Moves into the ice and he's no stranger to the ice, spends a lot of time on natural ice. He's also still climbing on some older fusion tools, which are, I think, a little bit better in the ice than uh, some of our modern competition tools. Moves into that low hook position. Really efficient clip in there at number 12. And even though he's doing the slightly slower method, he's really picking up that pace. Matches him with the left tool. Which side is he going to go for, right or left? Goes left side and uses the shoulder on a little pop, but manages to keep moving. Doesn't pop off altogether. Reaches over with the right hand into that hooked position. Two minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Clip 13 made. Over into that Stein. Eight seconds behind Kuzov left now. Really picking up the pace. Oh, butterflies. <laughs> Big reach with that right hand and he hits it first time. Ever the aggressive climber. Takes a bit of a risk, but he's so confident, reaches over himself for that next hold. Shaking ever so quickly into the figure four. Hits the hold next to clip 15. First time, manages to readjust it as well. Oh no, he's popped, but he's still on. Swiss oh, he's off! Oh, Yannick. He took a gamble. He took a gamble. He knew he had to be fast, he knew he had to be aggressive, and he was so, so close to sticking that. So, so close indeed, and that was what the lift thought of the action. He just missed it, and I watch, he does manage to readjust, places the edge of his tool on it, he's right at the back. It popped, he still held that right hand, and as he went up with the left, he was out of there. Oh, you can see that he's really annoyed with himself. <sighs> oh, Kendra, that was, it's kind of hard to take because actually I don't feel like he should be annoyed because he climbed so well. Yeah, if he had just paused, kicked his feet back in, I think that's what he's really annoyed about. And you can see as he marches off, he really expected more from himself, but sometimes that's competitions. I really feel for him there. Let's see it one more time. So he missed it. Managed to get it right at the back of the tool, which isn't the best place to have that hold. Bit of rotation popped it off, and he managed to hold it, and he did need to pause, but instead tried to use the momentum. Popped out. What a nightmare. Well, there are your, uh, there are your winners. Nikolai Kuzovlev and Maria Tolokanina. Both delighted, I'm sure. Kendra, what was your uh, your highlight of that final? Wow, that's a hard one. The just the surprises there at the end. <laughs> I'm still uh, reeling from that, but I mean, we saw a lot of beautiful, smooth climbing there from Maria, Nikolai, uh, Park. You know, it was really great to watch all of those climbers. Yeah, it was a really very interesting. Uh, Interesting final. Petra Klingler with bronze medal. And uh, Munshan Shin with silver and Maria Tolokanina with gold. Kendra, I'm going to head outside now uh, before I do to go and grab some athlete sport interviews. Um, let's take a look at the highlights from the speed competition earlier today.
Devon Sky are the fastest of the two. Both climbers with somewhat slow runs. There is a second between them. So Fayot Tistova needs to pull something out of the bag and that fall means that she will have to settle for Silver Medal. Natalia Savitskaya takes the top in just under 10 seconds and takes her first gold medal of the season. Gets off to the faster of the two starts. Sukarev with a couple of stumbles. Nemov breaks away now. Big finish for him. Sukarev slips to the top and it's 8.2 seconds. Nemov off to the slightly slow of the two starts but accelerates even though he gets his tool stuck. Sukarev advancing now. Oh, he's close. He's left his tool. He left his tool behind and it's 8.07 for Anton Sukarev. Yemov takes the gold medal. Sukarev with the silver. What a brilliant finals run. So that concludes the lead final and before we get underway with the medal ceremony uh, I have Anton Yemov here who took another gold medal his fourth of the season in the speed competition Anton congratulations Thank you um, tell us, you've been absolutely dominant so far this season. What's changed for you? What is it that you're doing better? What is it that you're doing differently? No, I don't know. In this year, I tried to show my best result. But in this year, it's just a little bit of a success on my side. Думаю, как-то так сложилось. Ну и плюс, может, добавилось опыта с прошлого года. I don't know about luck, but uh, certainly very, very impressive. One thing that we've noted often uh, in those speed finals is in those moments of pressure, when it really comes down to it and he has to win the duel, he appears so calm and so collected. How does he control his nerves in those situations? Да, это так. Ну, я как бы так изначально себя настраиваю, что нужно, нужно как бы, ну, успокоиться и как бы думать только о трассе и, то есть, не думать о соперниках. Настраивать только на трассу, на прохождение трассы. Читать ее внимательно, как бы, и выполнять, как бы, то, что, то, что придумал в голове у себя, это исполнять на трассе. Um, he's saying that he is really calm when he comes, uh, when he is going to climb, but um, he's also saying that he's working on the route uh, and not, uh, like, trying to beat someone. Smart moves indeed. Well, listen, Anton, congratulations one more time for your fourth gold medal of the season. Um, best of luck for the next rounds and, of course, for the World Championships in Kirov. Um, before we finish, actually, there's one thing. Lots and lots of people support Anton on the broadcast. Lots of people in both English and Russian. Is there anything you'd like to say to the fans at home? Uh, 
uh, this year and this helps him a lot so he's saying thank you to all of the people who does who do uh, who do this well, thank you so much for your efforts and so for your athleticism. Anton Yamov there, gold medal in the speed competition here. We do have our next medalist. I think we need to just head over this way uh, so that we're not in the way of the podiums. Um, our gold medalist in speed is Natalia Savitskaya. Um, Natalia, congratulations on your first gold medal and first medal of the season. Oh, <laughs> When you were um, when you were up there today and you knew that you had to win for gold medal, what was going through your mind? I <laughs> Четыре старта, и поэтому уже на последний ты стараешься не совершать этих ошибок, и уже с чистой, ну, старался пойти к трассе с чистой головой и совершать меньше ошибок. She certainly made significantly less mistakes and was so, so successful. Um, from here, what do we expect to see from her next? Will she be in Denver? Will we, will we see you in Kirov? She's not going to be in Denver, but in Kirov she will be. Well, Amazing work here with that gold medal and congratulations once more. We wish you the best of luck for the World Championships in Kirov. <laughs> Natalia Savitskaya, the gold medalist in the women's speed competition here today, stays in that top three and we'll have to see what the results finish like in Denver to see where she finishes in the rankings. And we have Another Russian interview now. Gold medal in the lead competition, the ever-dominant Nikolai Kuzovlev. Nikolai, come over here. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Это пятый старт. Кубка. Подожди. Пятый старт. Я уже обеспечил себе победу в общем кубке. У меня четыре победы, одно второе место. Чему я очень рад. Это лучшее мое выступление в трудности в общем кубке. This is uh, his best season. Uh, he won four gold medals and one silver. silver. Yes. So he's very happy about it. And so he should be. And we've asked him before, but we ask him again, what's changed? Why is he so dominant this season? He's stronger, he's faster, he's more powerful than everybody else. Наверное, появилась какая-то уверенность. Не бывает так, чтобы раз и ты постоянно выиграешь. Это упорный труд, большая работа проделанная. Ну и, наверное, какая-то появилась стабильность, уверенность. Наверное, за те годы, что неудачных выступлений приобрел, наверное, вот эту долгожданную стабильность, чему я очень рад. He's feeling more consistent right now and uh, more <laughs> I forgot the words. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, more, more consistent than a lot of training. That's two good answers. The, the thing that I'm really interested to know is four gold medals. Where does he go from here? Denver. And what's next? More gold medals? World Championship? Да, впереди у нас победу в кубке одержал, но впереди самый важный старт сезона. Он проходит раз в два года. Это чемпионат мира, который будет проходить в марте в городе Кирев в России. Там будет поддержка уже родных родной земли. Я думаю, что в моих силах победить. Я на это надеюсь. Uh, so, uh, he thinks he can do it. He can win the gold medal. Well, on that note, good luck. Congratulations one more time. Um, we're going to head this way, Anna. Let's go uh, and grab our next interview, which is going to be over 
somewhere near the hut. I'm looking for Maria. I've been told that she's over here, so I'm going to walk over there, and she's going to appear. I have a good feeling about this. I have a good feeling about this. <laughs> We're walking over here. Let's play Where's Maria Tolokanina. She's here. Here she comes. She's running. Excellent. Almost. Almost. There she is. Stand right there. <laughs> Maria, congratulations again. Again. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, when you were climbing, you didn't manage to get to the top. For the, one of the first times this season, what was going through your mind when you knew that you hadn't topped? На самом деле трасса очень длинная, времени мало, на ней приходилось все время двигаться. Думаю, если бы чуть-чуть было больше времени, я бы смогла топнуть. Но она очень длинная и очень много забирает сил. The route was very long and uh, very little time for it, so it was very hard to get to the top. A quick word about the semi-finals. Obviously, it was a, a tricky situation because nine women managed to top the route. What were your thoughts on the route setting here overall and also on that on that semi-finals? На самом деле это не очень хорошо для спортсменов, когда есть много топов на трассе. Хотелось бы избежать таких моментов и делать более сложные трассы, потому что уровень спортсменов уже намного выше. She's not very happy about uh, the situation in the semifinals. She's saying that it would be better if uh, the routes were a little bit more difficult so that the, there wouldn't there wouldn't be this situation like nine tops and one girl isn't in the semifinals. Um, this is the penultimate round of the season. We have one more to go. You already have four gold medals. Can it be a fifth in a world championship? Я буду стараться и делать все для этого. She will be trying. <laughs> I'm sure she will. Well, listen, Maria, congratulations again. Four gold medals, absolutely sensational stuff. We have two more interviews. We've managed to get hold. Oh, love that. Love that emotion. We have two uh, French climbers, or two French finalists, to get the take on the competition from the locals. Uh, I believe they're right behind me. Let's grab Luna right now. <laughs> Luna, bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Oui. Oui, let's let's do it in English for everybody else. Um, talk me through that finals, mate. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome for me. Uh, yeah, I just climbed my best. I think like a few mistakes, a few quick draws. I didn't manage to clip the first time, but yeah, I'm very happy for my first podium here in Champagny at home, and just amazing. Yeah, you climbed so, so well. Uh, it was so exciting to see you moving through it, and you know, definitely with the. Um, with those little mistakes and refinements, Kendra and I were very critical <laughs> in the in the broadcast, but not in a in a bad way, you know, just in like, oh, we'd be so excited to see what you've got when you manage to just dial those little yeah. things in. What do you train from here? What is it that you're going to try and improve? From now? Like, okay. So, I don't know. I think those kind of mistakes were not really due to a bad training or something. Like, you know, clip a quick draw is just a matter of luck sometimes, so... I was quite pumped and the quick draw just turned and yeah um, after that I didn't make so many mistakes in my climbing really maybe I could have been more efficient and more like faster sometimes for sure but otherwise I think I'm just gonna train more and more <laughs> to go not stay in the third place I want to win well, it's great to hear. And a quick word about this crowd here. They were so supportive of you. Uh, how important is it to have a crowd like this? Yeah, um, actually, it really depends. Sometimes I hear what everything uh, goes outside, like cheering and stuff. And sometimes I, sometimes I don't hear it at all. But this comp, I really heard a lot of cheering. And like when they tell me the time I left and my climbing. And that really helps. That gets me motivated and keep climbing fast even when you are like at the last part of your route and you're pumped and tired and you got to keep moving, moving, moving because, you know, a second just to clip the quick draw and you're third in that second. <laughs> yeah, and, and that is literally the detail that we went into, you know, those few seconds. Yeah. Listen, Luna, thank you so much for your performance for joining us for the interview and of course for the interview that we did the other day. Really looking forward to seeing that. You can see that live. Enjoy your podium moment. Thanks, man.
Uh, we do have Marion Thomas now for a quick chat. She's right there. Let's get her over here. Marion, bonsoir. Hi. How are you feeling? I'm feeling I'm happy. Yeah, happy to climb here in the final with all the crowd, French, French team, and yeah, it was very crazy. That was going to be my first question. The crowd were sensational when you were climbing. How, how much do they improve or influence your, your performance? Well, uh, I think they influence a lot <laughs> because, yeah, it's crazy when you have all your family, friends, and yeah, they all came here. And so you just want to do your best just to, uh, they could be proud. And yeah, it's so much positive ways and I love it. <laughs> Let's talk about the route itself and your actual climbing. Uh, what did you think of your performance here tonight? I'm quite happy it was uh, easier than semi-final, I think the route, but so much longer. And so I get pumped and I have to train it so much because I, yes, I'm getting pumped a bit too early. And yeah, I have to train it because yeah, I, I, I missed a bit of resistance, I think, and, but I'm happy. The other thing that I really noticed, and we talked about it with Luna's climbing as well, there's a couple of refinements that maybe could be made around um, decision making, for example, in the steep section before the roof. Um, you took a couple of seconds to think about going into the figure four. How do you go about training those things? Is that just purely competition experience or is that something that you work on with your coach? Uh, I don't have a coach anymore. Cora. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, uh, I, last yeah, last year I was I was not able to go to the finals and this year I did two finals and so I think I have yeah improvements and you always step by step and so now next step is to improve this thing in final but it's already so great to be in final so now I have to yeah step by step to do these things and to train for climbing in final because it's not the same woods semi-final qualification and final and it's not the same type of route so not the same style so I have to yeah I know what I have to train and I I will do it last question <laughs> will you be in Denver yes well listen you uh, rest get psyched and enjoy Denver thank you so much for your performance and for joining us anything you'd like to say to the fans at home Yes, I'd, I'd like to say thanks for the foundation of my school, Foundation Grenoble NP, because it's thanks to them that I can go to the competition because they are helping me. And so thank you for the school to help me to do all these things. And it's, yeah, it's crazy to be here in finals in the World Cup. So thanks to all the friends who are supporting on the live stream because it's so much support for us. And thank you. So Marion, we will see you in Denver and speaking of Denver in two weeks' time. The World Cup Tour finishes the 2019 season with the sixth round in Denver at City Hall. Check this little video out. On the 23rd and 24th of February, the 2019 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup Tour lands in Denver. Right outside City Hall, we're gonna transform the whole thing into an ice sports winter festival. We caught up with some of the athletes to find out what their hype is for the final round of the season. Yeah, Denver is going to be awesome. I've heard that there's going to be tons of people, and it's the it's the last competition of the World Cup uh, series, and so you know a lot of people are going to be excited for that. And it's going to be really cool that it's right in the center of Denver, which is a pretty big city, a pretty big place compared to where we usually compete, kind of in these little villages. So it should be awesome. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I didn't have time to go to Denver this year because of the guiding and skiing work. But now I could change it because I hear it's getting an amazing uh, festival there. I'm really excited to climb in Denver for the World Cup because we are expecting a lot, so many people uh, in the center of uh, the city. So it will be just crazy, crazy events to see and to, to have a lot of support. Denver will be the most important and important competitions in the world. We This is our last competition in Denver. I hope it's a good challenge and also uh, uh, first time in Denver is making the World Cup. I hope it's a good uh, competition. Yeah, I think every climber should go to Denver. It's a must-attending event. I hope for the organizer that there will be a lot of people. It would be great.
Well, if you're not excited by that, then more fool you, because <laughs> let me tell you, it's going to be a brilliant season finale. Athletes from all over the world will descend on Denver, and we're expecting crowds of between 10 and 20,000 people at that incredible ice festival in downtown Denver, one of the main cities in the USA. Interesting fact, one of the busiest airports in the world, if not the busiest, I think, by number of aircraft that travels through it. Google it. Um, there's your female speed podium. That will be happening in just a second. I'm just waiting for the announcer to fire up. In third place, bronze medal goes to Lilia Bogdan of Russia. Second place, the silver medal goes to Katerina Feoktistova of Russia. With that silver medal, Feoktistova now sits in fourth place, 284 points. Amazing recovery after almost three weeks of hospitalized sickness. The first gold medal for Natalia Savitskaya this year. She took a bronze back in Switzerland. Now sits in second place, tied with Maria Tolokanina behind Ekaterina Kosheva, who still holds on to that first place in the fourth ranking here in France. We'll now have the Russian national anthem. There it is, first podium before here tonight. All Russian in the speed competition, third place, Valeria Bogdan, bronze medal, second place, Ekaterina Feoktistova with silver medal, and first place, Natalia Savitskaya with gold medal. We'll now go to the men's speed podium. Some children in interesting local dress, possibly ready to present the medals. Sometimes things happen at the UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup that we have no idea were planned. In this case, that's that. Here come our male athletes. Third place in bronze medal goes to Vladislav Yudlov. He now sits in second place in the overall rankings with 361 points. the overall ranking he dropped one result so these athletes that go to Denver will get another chance to cement their position in the overall silver medal his second of the season and third medal in total the predator Anton Sukarev. Very well deserved second place for him. And 
first place and for the fourth time this season gold medal it goes to Anton Yemov absolutely sensational performance this season nobody been able to catch him literally and figuratively 455 points in the overall ranking and now we will have the second time the Russian national anthem There it is, men's speed podium and three very happy people. Vanislav Yudlov with bronze, Anton Sukarev with silver and Anton Yemov dominant once again with gold medal. Ian's got a team in the background there sorting out the prizes, the main organiser and the man with the microphone and the goggles, which seems somewhat extreme. Uh, is Philippe Jean Lambert, the speaker for this weekend's event. And now it's time for the women's lead podium. Third place and bronze medal goes to Petra Klingler of Switzerland. Amazing work from her. Second place and silver medal awarded to South Korea's Yun Seon Shin. Yun Seon Shin now presented this silver medal in the women's league competition. Currently second place in the overall rankings with 364 points. She's had three silvers and one gold this season. Once again, completely dominant. The ice queen reigns supreme. Maria Solokanina takes her fourth gold medal of the season, 440 points. Keeping her in the top spot in that overall ranking and in just a few moments time, we'll have the third time this evening, the Russian national anthem. Thank you, ladies. The national anthem of the winner country, the Libre National du Pays Vainqueur, Libre Russe.
So there was our third podium of the night. The women's lead podium, third place and bronze medal for Petra Klingler of Switzerland. Second place and silver medal for Incheon Shin of Korea and first place and gold medal and fourth of the season for Maria Tolokanina of Russia. And here comes the men's podium. Third place and bronze medal goes to local lad. And of course, huge round of applause for Luna Ladevall. Result puts him now into 11th place overall. Not done a whole season this year. Second place. Silver medal goes to Hyung Park. Remains in the second place overall. Three silver medals this season now. Unable to pass Nikolai Kuzovlev. Excellent work from the Korean Ice King. The gold medal in first place. Absolutely dominant. Four golds and one silver. This one in Champagny, just as important as the others, and you see that emotion. Nikolai Kuzovlev takes the gold here in Champagny of Lenoir. In just a few moments' time for the fourth and final time this evening. We will have the Russian national anthem. And that was the Russian national anthem. We now have one more award to be given. It's with great sadness that one of the great members of our community, Stefan Hosson, who was the organizer of this event, he was one of the chief members of the route setting team, he was one of the chief members of the structure team here in Champagny of Amois, sadly was killed in a climbing accident last year. To commemorate his memory, we, ha we have what's called the Stefan Ousson Award, and it will be presented to the two top-ranking French athletes. So, of course, the two top French athletes in this competition, Marion Thomas and Luna Ladevant, and I believe this award will be presented by the president of FF Camp. So we'll just go to that award now.
So now the members of the Champagny Ice Experience team coming forward to present that award. Looks like there's going to be a few words from the president of FF Cam. So there are the Stefan Usson trophies. Which will be awarded to Nino Adamant and Marion Thomas. Each year these awards will be passed on to the next athlete who wins it. Marion Thomas, first recipient of the Stéphane Rousson Award. Encouragerie up there with her as well. And the men's winner of the Stefan Usson Award is Nuno Laravon. Great to see such a prominent member of the French climbing community and the international competition climbing community commemorated in such a special way. Congratulations to our first ever Stefan Osson Trophy Award winners. And that's all of our awards for the evening. And so now we have a few last bits and pieces to share with you. Let's take a quick look at the men's lead results. That lead final. First place in gold medal goes to Nikolai Kuzovlov of Russia. Second place in silver medal, Hyung Park of Korea. Third place and bronze medal for Luna Ladamont of France. Fourth place, Yannick Glatard for Switzerland. Fifth place, Dmitry Grabenikov of Russia. Sixth place, Alexei Marshalov of Russia. Seventh place, Mohamed Reza Safdarian of Iran. And eighth place goes to Korea's Chang Hyun Lee. Let's take a look at the women's results. First place, once more, a gold medal for Russia's Maria Talkanina. Silver medal in second place for Wonsyon Shin of Korea. Third place and bronze medal, incredible result for Petra Klingler of Switzerland. Fourth place from Korea, Han Marae Song. Fifth place, Zenab Kobra Musabe of Iran. Sixth place, Marion Thomas of France. Seventh place, Mariam Filipova of Russia. And eighth place is Ima McSwigan of Ireland. Another sensational final here. 
Just to recap, if you do want to get in touch with us here, you can do it whilst we're live, and you can do it when we're off air as well. Couldn't be easier to do. Use that hashtag, UIAA, Ice Climbing. You can do that on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and we will do our best to share that hashtag where possible. If you want to contact me personally, it couldn't be easier. Search for at Liam Lonsdale on any of the social media platforms. You can send me a direct message or a comment, tag me in your posts, whatever you see fit, and we will be, uh, or rather, I will be delighted to hear from you. That pretty much concludes our competition here in champigny en Valois, the fifth and penultimate round of the 2019 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup. And from here, in two weeks' time, we will finish the season in Denver, Colorado. The date is on your screen right now. Make sure you tune in. Do not miss that one. I'd like to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to our sponsors. The title sponsor of the World Cup is Outdoor Research. Without them, it would not be possible. Big thank you to our broadcast partners, QTV. As always, they've done a sensational job in adverse, condi adverse conditions. Big thank you to everybody that tuned in today. You guys at home make this broadcast what it is. You are very special, and I love hearing from you during the broadcast. It's thank you from me, Liam Lonsdale. Whatever it is that you're doing for the rest of the day, do it safely and do it with heart. Thank you, and good night.